Hello and welcome in, all Tritons, O-Niners, PCHers, Neptune Pirates, Sheriffs, Fake ID Card Makers, and actually no, no hedge fund managers are allowed in this podcast. Get out! Out! Scat! Out the door! To Life on Mars, the Veronica Mars Rewatch podcast where we go through episode by episode. I'm your host, Brenton. And I'm Emily. And we're here to talk about episode 12, Clash of the Tritons. What did you think of this very fast-paced and uh, <clears throat> busy episode? Sorry, I had to burp. Um, you know, it's one that I always forget about. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do a lot for me, <laughs> but it's got some nuggets. Totally. It's um, not as wild as the moon calf collective no well yeah I, it's a little bit more entertaining i think i just mean like in terms of like the plot isn't as ridiculous totally no um and i like that the secret society is just as big of goons as you think it would be as the people that are in it um coming from sorority life i can tell you that frat boys are just fucking goobers yeah i guess that's true i mean I've never met people in a secret society that weren't a bunch of fucking goobers. <laughs> and I've been to a well, Freemasons location. The founding fathers. Um, I don't know. It just looked like a bunch of old white guys to me and their wives. Yeah, that's probably it. Um, but not this one. No. We had really good food, I remember that. Oh, that's good. What'd you get? They did like a buffet style. I don't remember. Just like sandwiches, dinner rolls, full hmm. thing. No, oh, that's good. You do a skit for the Freemasons and they feed you. Nice. Strangest thing I've ever done. <laughs> that's really weird. It's freshman year of high school. Um, but yeah, I forgot that this was also the episode of all the um, Eccles family drama. Yeah. Yeah, I always forget about the mom until it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a different episode. <laughs> it gets a lot bigger in this. They show it multiple times. I think they show it in the next one as well. Mm-hmm. Because it, Logan wants, he's like, my mom's not dead. Mm-hmm. But we don't get to that yet. No. Um, yeah, which is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot going on. So we start with Veronica mm-hmm. waiting to meet with her dad's ex-girlfriend to talk right. about her feelings about her dead friend. Mm-hmm. But not. Um... And um, the guy wearing an MIT sweater in the lobby has a chessboard on his lap. He's playing chess by himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, Having a great time. Can't wait to leave this school because all these people make fun of the way I just play chess. By myself. Mm-hmm. On my lap. Mm-hmm. Not on a table. I just like... Do people play against themselves? I, uh, they probably practice. If you go to, if you have to ask that question, you're not MIT material. No. Um, my mom did always tell me that I was smart and pretty, so I should have been queen of the chess team. Mm. And queen is the best on the chessboard. It is. You can mm. move in all directions. Exactly. She Do goes both every- ways. <laughs> Front, back, side to side. Exactly. And diagonal. Yes. And like a horse. Just like my dancing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. She can do the L's like the horse, too? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I think. Could be wrong. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I'm not MIT material either. <laughs> but maybe, I don't know. You taught me to play chess. That's true. So. <laughs> <laughs> Could be just making it up as I go along, apparently. That's what we do in my family. Mm, I like it. Mm-hmm. King me. That's how we all learn to play Monopoly in this family wrong. <laughs> um... Um, Monopoly is not a favorite pastime of ours. It takes too long. Yeah, it's really long. I liked the game of life better. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, my ear needs to pop. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to be like, are you all right? No. Oh, okay. Um, so Homeboy's playing chess by himself, mm-hmm. and then Veronica goes in to talk to... What's her name? Yeah, I always forget, but it's it's in the synopsis if I pull it up. Um, and while she's sitting in lady who I can't remember her name's office, right? she plays with a stapler so that then she can switch it out for her spy stapler with the right. microphone in it. Uh-huh. Rebecca James is uh, the counselor. I would 
would have never gotten to James. No. Rebecca. But. Um. Yeah, and they don't talk about that it's like, I know you're not fond of me. It's like, I guess, read between the lines. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. A lot mm-hmm. of it's weird. I don't get it. I don't uh, think you care for me. <laughs> like, no shit. You dated her dad. <laughs> um, and then she's like, Veronica, like, you need to talk about your feelings. And Veronica's like, no, I need to catch a Lily's killer. Mm-hmm. And I feel that. Totally. As someone who's got a lot of Scorpio energy in them, I am on a search for truth. Hmm. I don't need closure. I need truth. I need to, I need to get them. Well, but she just needs to know. Yeah, that's Part true. Part of it is the mystery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we tune in every week. Exactly. Exactly. Us. We're just like Veronica. And then we get a scene with Rick, right? Straight to Rick. Uh, yes. He gets called into the principal's office by, or the guidance counselor's office. Nope. Principal. Principal's office. Yeah. Um, and Sheriff the Lamb is there. Mm-hmm. Do they have a school principal? At some point, the school principal gets ousted. That's oh. why I remember this. Mm. But I, you, we never see him. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I think that has something to do with maybe it was... I'm trying to remember the background on the show if uh, Rob Thomas's dad was the vice principal, which might make more make some sense. Oh, really? Yeah. I love that character. Yeah. I think that's like... He, my, I think his dad was the vice principal at the school that he modeled this kind of like after his own experience. Oh, yeah. I think th- I think that's the the line there. So Rick and his buddy Tim went out drinking the night before. Yeah, they got wild with their fake IDs. How'd you get in the clubs, Rick? And Sheriff Lamb needs to know how they got in the clubs because mm-hmm. Rick dropped Tim off at the ER unconscious he's in a coma rick which also if they had one shot two shot at 11 bars yeah i mean i guess that would put you in a coma maybe you don't know all the effects of alcohol poisoning but could happen yeah i would think he would have had to have done drugs Between read between the lines, I guess. Um, I pro- I might have been in a coma if I took eleven shots in high school. Oh, I guess this is right. This is high school. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. One shot before work. If I did eleven shot shots break. now, you would. I couldn't. I wouldn't even do it. Yeah, we'd be in a coma. No, I'd be dead. Or I'd throw up before I got to four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> This is okay. This is okay. <laughs> um, and so then they're like, Rick, who's making the fakes? And he's like, Veronica Mars. Yeah. Give us a name, Rick. And sure, shake it is out like, of you. Thank God, because I love bullying her. Mm-hmm. Because I'm got an inferiority complex, and I had to take it out on the daughter of my co- old coworker. Yeah, I don't understand that whole thing, but it's fine. Yeah. You know, somebody's got to be the villain. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Um, they march down, and he's like, I got a warrant for this locker. Open it up. He doesn't need a warrant. No, he but, doesn't um, have a warrant. <laughs> they open, and she's like, oh, yeah, sir, search in there. I got nothing. And then all these IDs spill out. But they're blank. Right. And they search her wallet, and she's like, oh, yeah. Actually, these these ones are mine. But if they had really looked at the ones in her wallet and the ones they'd collected from Rick, they would have noticed something. Right. Hers looked real. Craftsmanship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like why Veronica's so pissed later. Mm-hmm. She's like, people are buying bogus IDs. There's no holograms. There's no nothings. Yeah. And they're using yearbook photos. Yeah, that's the weirdest part. That is the really funny part. But that, I mean, it's resourceful. Um. So... Veronica is getting taken downtown right as everybody's getting out of school. So everybody sees her as she's getting handcuffed. He's like, I don't need to handcuff you. Or, or what? It? It's something like, I'm going to enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. It's a. Uh... It's also weird that he, yeah, he feels the need to handcuff her and that he finds it appropriate. Right. <laughs> you know, that, uh, that, uh, 
Veronica is a flight risk um, yeah. or a fighter. And then at the station, so she sees Rick and she's like, hey, because it's like, oh, uh, um, oh, God, I forget the attorney's name. I just lost it. Come back to him. Points oh, out. Um, damn it. I know. I gave you the disease. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, your buddy. Rick, they only have your buddy Rick's testimony. And she like walks up. It's like, hi, Rick. Do I know you? Yeah, I loved that. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, yeah, it's. He eventually tells her it's because he was being hazed by a secret society. Mm-hmm. The Tritons. The Tritons. A bunch dun, of dun, nerds. Dun. Yeah, pretty much. Um. And uh, yeah, they're they're on there because uh, they they had to go to so many bars as part of the hazing thing. Mm-hmm. Twelve bars. Also, uh, just to put a quick. <laughs> um. Just to put a quick uh, pin in it, um, that means they would have done this all on their own. They would have gone to 11 bars all on their own. So they're just idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Once we find out what it actually is. Yeah. Well, also, how are there 11 bars in this small town? That's true. Uh, let's see. Actually, even in my small town, there's probably only definitely not 11 bars. They must have driven down to San Diego. There you go. Yeah. Can we take a pause? Yeah. Weird. And we're back after a brief, sh- after a brief break of a few days, <laughs> we're healthy, recovered, and ready to continue talking. Yeah, it was really hard to focus when I was on that Benadryl, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was listening back to make sure where we were, and I could see it's like, oh, I was noticing you trailing off, and you were trailing off, and then it was <laughs> not a good situation. Should we re-record it? No. It wasn't like that bad. You've made me self conscious. <laughs> it's totally fine. Now I was trailing off and everybody knows I was on bin drill. We can just cut it out. Snip snip. <laughs> 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 Which brings me to my next point. Why is it that if I want to get a hysterectomy <laughs> I have to be married with children? <laughs> you have something we need to talk about? I mean, you know, I'd be down to not have ovaries. Hmm. Interesting. Would you be down to snip snip? Maybe. It's concerning. Slightly. Why? Just, you know, it's an invasive procedure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Just saying. I don't want to have surgery. I mean fair but like i didn't want to get my iud inserted but it was better than forgetting to take birth control every day i see snip snip (laughs) well right (laughs) um so when last we left off in the police station Mm -hmm. and veronica is talking to cliff our lawyer remembered his name Oh, I was like, like the bar. <laughs> exactly. Yes, Mr. Bar. Because um, he passed it. And uh, <laughs> that was absolute <laughs> trash. And I'm going to ask you to leave. Um, you can go out with the garbage. <laughs> but he's, he states that, yeah, the only testimony they have is Rick's. And then she goes and confronts Rick. And is like, do I know you? And he's like, no, blah, 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 blah. Um, but <laughs> I was. Um, <laughs> told by a group of people, the people that I was out drinking and getting hazed for, to blame it on you. Pardon me. <laughs> Had a little burpsy boo. We just ate dinner. A little burpsy boo? A little burpsy boo. It was a little, a little <laughs> strawberry rice crispy. Right, you guys smell that? Mm. Um, Allergen friendly. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't like Rick. No. He's an asshole. Can't trust him as can. I can can't o- trust can o- him as far as I can throw him, Thank and you. I can't even pick him up. Mm. Well, that's yeah. not true. I'm pretty fucking strong. Mm-hmm. You'd spin him over your head like a strong man in the circus. Except that he's tall, so I probably like he'd have to go stiff. <laughs> <laughs> Stop moving. <laughs> Stop wiggling. Quit squirming. But yeah, he's well. He's a he's a squealer. All right, that's why we don't like him. You know what we say about snitches. Stitches. Exactly. 
Um, you know, and it's kind of you know, oh god, my brain just malfunctioned. That's right. We'll move on. <laughs> It just completely shut down. Beep boop boop. Um, we'll plug you back in, R2. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we get a nice scene with Wallace after this where he says, hey, I heard that you had to get taken down with uh, three officers and a shotgun. Uh-huh. That's my favorite. Um, and that then she's like, okay, Wallace, I need you to pretend to go get a fake or you have to go try to get a fake so you can um tell me who's doing it and so she motivates him by giving the analogy of like what if you needed a fake to take out the prettiest girl in school (laughs) and then he's like hey veronica can you make me a fake (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i love wallace i love wallace not the best but he does it because that's what your friend wally does Mm -hmm. with her money of course Mm -hmm. he's not gonna put up the money for it he'll do it well but we find that out later first we have to figure out how no, right, like he he'll do it, but oh, right, mm-hmm. okay, all right, mm-hmm. all right, all right, you're right. Mm-hmm. Jumping ahead. Um, what was that? Say it again. You're right. A little louder. <clears throat> you're right. Thank you. Can we just cut that and I'll play it on repeat <laughs> every morning? <laughs> That's the alarm. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Good morning. You're right. <laughs> we can do it. Um. I still wouldn't get up. And Logan comes into school, and everybody knows. I put, tormented by dad slutting around. (laughs) (laughs) No one talks about men with the word slut, and I decided Mm. that night that I was doing it. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to be this riled about the patriarchy by the time we were (laughs) recording this. But the glove fits. But apparently I was. Mm -hmm. I know. I am a psychic. I would be like, whoa, his, his dad got stabbed. <laughs> and then also, like, what awful talk radio. Like, give me your best talk radio morning voice. Hey, it's Mikey in the morning coming in with the zoo crew. You're good at that. Thank you. I used to listen to talk <laughs> talk radio in the mornings. Why? I don't know. What else I was going to do? We listened to country music talk radio in the morning. Oh, howdy, y'all. It was still from the Central Valley. It's not like they <laughs> This country, Mike. And Country Tim. I think it was Big Mike and the something something, you know. The Morning Mike. I don't know. <laughs> it was Big Mike and the Country Jamboree. It was actually this girl that I danced with's dad. Oh. And they lived across the street from Samantha, my best friend. And you said you don't know famous people. I can't remember his name. <laughs> Could have been like... The, like steaming coffee steve like i have no fucking idea <laughs> that must have been funny for her it's like because your dad leaves like way early in the morning and mm-hmm. then it's like gets home in the middle of the afternoon i guess when you're at school yeah um i just remember that she had a really cute older brother because mm. he'd come to the recitals hmm. uh-huh and you'd fight this guy <laughs> pick him up spin him around he did go to my rival school so in the end i think i talked to him twice he was as dumb as a board maybe i don't know if you're out there i don't remember your name uh, I don't old even, boardy i don't even remember her name plank Mm-mm. it'll come to me okay it's probably best i don't know maybe that's why god didn't give me a good memory <laughs> God giveth, God taketh. Well, he opens a door and... God giveth, God taketh the names. (laughs) Ah, man. (laughs) His Uh, altar boy kicked in. uh Uh-huh. And then um, all this... uh, Speaking of fighting, Logan gets into a fight because someone's like, ooh, your mom. And I was like, wildly violent character. Yes. I wrote very interesting notes. (laughs) He Neanderthals. He does Neanderthal. Gonna go that get after him, defend her honor. Well, and that's really what like they make his like one like personality flaw is that he punches holes in walls. Yeah, exactly. and I'm like, is this a normal thing for boys? And if so, y'all need to fucking deal with it. Yes, and yes. I don't get to punch walls. You don't get to punch walls. No. Oh my god! In college, of just like there was this talk of I'm gonna punch a hole in the wall. I'm gonna punch a hole in the wall, and everybody being like, Yeah, punch a hole in the wall, and me being like, No, don't punch a hole in the wall. And then he punches a hole in the wall, and I'm like, Why'd you punch a hole in the wall? He's like, Relax, I'm gonna fix it. And then we get in an argument because I'm like, You punched a hole in the wall, and he's like, Relax, I'm gonna fix it. Did you live at this house? Yeah. 
And he's like, you just punched a hole in my wall. So they punched holes in multiple different walls? Yes. <laughs> it's infuriating. <laughs> You're friends with stupid people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> College man, them. don't don't punch holes in walls. Right. And he's just looking High at school. me, telling me to relax. And I'm like, I've been very vocal <laughs> about not wanting this to happen. <laughs> Maybe you should have <laughs> relaxed. Me relax. <laughs> oh, boy. If he had relaxed, he wouldn't have punched a hole in the wall. Well, I'm assuming totally. it's a he. I'm making assumptions here. You are correct. I think I, I have a picture of who it might have been. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Very clear, isn't it? <laughs> Indeed. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> You could say that that's our Logan, minus right. the famous dad or the... Mm-hmm. His dad get, did get stabbed. No, just kidding. <laughs> I was uh, like, really? No, he got a giant tattoo of a cross on his back. Yes. Um, <laughs> Everyone's midlife crisis. <laughs> See, but that's normal. Why can't he learn a little bit of anger management like his father? <laughs> my favorite was that um, my parents came to pick me up or my dad and my sister, freshman year. And his dad comes to pick him up freshman year. And um, he he does all the loading, and his dad just hangs out in his room trying to talk to us. (laughs) Love that. Uh, That's great. Yeah. But it makes a lot lot of sense. My favorite thing was when you guys moved out of your senior house, and I came over, and everyone was cleaning. And I was like, I'm going to sit on this couch and help Connor's brother find his stuff. (sighs) Boy, yeah, that was a fun one. Oh yeah, what's what's what stuff is his in this room? Well, uh, it'd be easier if I put what's my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Enough about your college days, right? And if we talk about good guys, let's switch to Weevil talking to uh, the guidance counselor Rebecca about his relationship with um, Lily. You know what my favorite part of this whole scene was? What when she reads him? So the guidance counselor reads Weevil a love note that he had written to Lily or kind of more like a threatening love note, which I have been, it's like a, I love you. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like it's aggressive. I love you so much. Like, even if you don't love me, I know you love me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've received those before. It's very uncomfortable. I'm sure. Um, it's very manipulative. It is gaslighting. It yeah. is not okay. If you were writing someone a love note and you tell them that you know that they love you and they aren't reciprocating, maybe don't. Right. Just don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I agree. I never wrote love notes. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I love you. (laughs) I didn't know you turned Italian. (laughs) Hey. Um, but um, he, she's showing him the notes and talking to him about his notes, and he's like, "I don't remember CCing you on that." And I'm like, "He's in a fucking biker game (laughs) in two thousand and like four gets it well they all have emails yeah but like i didn't know what cc'ing really did right but like these kids have email from the school yeah true my school didn't even have enough computers Hmm. (laughs) tell me more about your upper middle class (laughs) high school (laughs) we didn't have email they're a computer I mean, we had computers. Yeah. Was it the big, like, room-sized ones with punch cards? Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. No, but we did have the giant monitors, like the chunky-backed monitors still in a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, All the Dells? mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. I think some of them are flat screen eventually. Getcha. But Weevil really is talking about how they... uh, his relationship with he Lily. Could've, yeah, he could have he could have loved her. And the best part about this whole thing is that we're hearing this f- because we're we have the scene in the room because we are the audience, but also because Veronica can hear all of this on her stapler recorder. Mm-hmm. And she's in the car with the tarp. Uh huh. Very good hideout. Yes. Um, uh, sitting in a car with a car cover on it sounds like something that would trigger my claustrophobia. Totally, and it's probably it would be really hot. Uh huh. But. <laughs> very cool <laughs> but it is a great effect mm-hmm. um but um yeah great device throughout the entire episode weevil says that lily promised to not go back to logan but went back yeah Snapped and then his ignored fingers. weevil and that's why he wrote her the notes yeah i mean that sucks it does mm-hmm. um so we get a quick pivot to Rick because Rick comes knocking on the door because or no, no, Rick comes walking into the parking lot and she snags Rick <laughs> to get inside the car. And he, she he tells her about the Titans. 
<laughs> with an R. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sunshine. We watched that movie a lot. I don't, think, I don't know if I've ever seen it. Oh, okay. Um, well, you see, this the schools, they, uh, you know, one's got a great football team, but it's all white. And they're going to have, you know, a school that's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> dig it. Dig that hole, you idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. What was it called when everybody went to the same school? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, shit with my full ass. Was it when they stopped segregating schools? Thank and they you. Oh them? god, <laughs> integrating. Yeah, and um, so the they're what's the schools. year on this movie? When did it come out, or when does it take place? Both. Uh, it takes place in uh, late sixties, and it came out end of the early two thousands. I want to say like two thousand one. We really fucking romanticized race relations. As totally. A kid. Yeah, and you know he has Denzel's the other coach. He's the assistant coach. They become co coaches. I think I have seen this movie. Yeah, and he, you know, the the nice white coach. He has the black coach over for dinner, and oh, they get a brick through the window. Racism is bad. Oh yeah, I hate being an ally to people. It's so hard on me as the ally. It is really hard. And then they get the. The boy from that California, so Sunshine, and he doesn't understand segregation, so he tries to bring the black guys, black football players, into the restaurant, and they tell him to get out. My grandfather, but they play some damn good football. Always good. said that he never understood. Not that he believed that racism was happening, but that he never understood it because he grew up in California. He's like, why the fuck would people be racist? Like, mm-hmm. it's like there's no point. And I mean, yeah. obviously, racism was still a. Oh yeah big piece there Mm -hmm. but it was a very it was a it was similar to misogyny now where it is very um microaggressions versus blatant you may not use this drinking fountain right yeah exactly which is not not as equally as problematic problematic Ooh, problematic Mm -hmm. maggot Uh this is rotting just like america Mm -hmm. yeah um, so, so Rick gets in the car, tells her about the Tritons. We uh, remember them. And then the 12 labors, mm-hmm. which I'm like, this man really went through a plan when we find <laughs> out that he's lying later. Spoiler he, alert. Right, but he knew about the Tritons because his father his and father. his brother. Yeah, his father. Um, but the problem is that he um, he says that they have six pledges. Mm-hmm. And they, but they have twelve labors. It's very confusing because I guess it's only six of each grade because it's only seniors and juniors. Yeah, I guess so. If this was a true fraternity, you need freshmen. Yeah. Who's gonna carry your shit? Who's mm-hmm. gonna go get the pizza delivery? Right. Exactly, guys. They're not thinking this through. And the we, infrastructure of this fraternity is lacking. Totally. And when we see them later, it's it's not a very big one. Well, um, they're not exactly the. No, I mean. And then when he's like listening out to people, it's like, yeah, you know, the people you better, ba, 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 Bobby, ba, 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 Teddy, not Teddy, Duncan. And, no, I wrote it down. Six guys besides Rick and who's his friend that goes to? Tim. Rick Tim. and Tim. Yeah, and I was in a coma. Harry, Steve, Matt, and Duncan. And I was like, why not Logan? Right. Wow, card. He'd tell people. He would tell people. Yeah. I also wonder if he doesn't have a family line there. Oh, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's an actor's son. But also, like, Duncan's dad, like, came into money. Right, but he's, like, a businessman. Yeah, but, like, because his business took off. Yeah. Like, was he... I guess you have to have money to invest in your business. Totally. In that kind of business. Mm-hmm. In general. But, yeah, and I think maybe just because it's not an art career, My per favorite se, thing is that we get this list of, like, generic boy names and then Duncan. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, wah, wah, wah. Who's Harry, Matt, and Steve? <laughs> Curly and Mo. I don't remember them showing up in the <laughs> titles. <laughs> Trish. I love Three Stooges. Um, um, and then we go over to Logan, right? Waiting with the principal. Yeah. <laughs> he looked nervous. Uh-huh. 
Did I miss something or were you no, just nervous? I just couldn't remember. Oh, <laughs> it's like, oh no. Um, and his dad goes, I'm proud of, oh, because he's picking him up from school. That's what yes. he Yes. Okay, he's so like, now my note makes more sense. I'm proud of you for standing up for your mom. Um, and then I wrote, in all caps, wild Aaron Eccles. <laughs> wild like wild and he wild <laughs> yeah i put seems to be no worse for wear from getting stabbed yeah he recovered from that stabbing fairly well mm -hmm. i also have a note here that i was trying to write keith's name and i switched the i and the e two different times <laughs> and so i wrote i me can't Kite. spell instead of whatever note i was gonna write about him. <laughs> oh it, that's great uh-huh just great that's that's we were sober <laughs> A wizard's chest. <laughs> it was a mess. Uh, yeah. Um, cause is yeah. I think that's when, um, Aaron goes to Keith to mm -hmm. get him to look into like all the bad publicity, and my wife can't take another one bad story. Dun dun dun. Mm hmm. Um, and then we get OMG. Triton, Neptune connection. Triton's conch shell. Yeah. In the emblem. <laughs> yeah. And um, Wallace disclosing to Veronica about the, the locker scheme. Yes. And he says he's like Shaft. And she says, shut your mouth. He, I put underneath the OMG, Triton, Neptune connection, Triton's conch shell, I have Wallace dash Shaft mm -hmm. slash mystery locker asterisk 110. Two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> You're writing it. down for years. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it down like how I take notes for work. Like I'm like, okay, and then there's gonna be that <laughs> right. much. And put a note here and an asterisk <laughs> there. And, um, that's great. Yeah, no, it's that's good studious notes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I have Logan out of calculus test. <laughs> Logan at a calculus test. Out of calculus test. Mm-hmm. Murder dash broken up temporarily. Yes. Oh, yeah, because she pulled, he's talking, he's talking to, to the, the guidance counselor. counselor. I was like, I'm going to try and figure out where she's talking about. He's like, thanks for pulling me out of the calculus test. And then he called her by her first name. Yeah, of course. So rude. Yeah. No, because he's that shit. I still call your mom by her last name. <laughs> Miss Bile. <laughs> As a kid, I never called any grownups by their first name except for mm -hmm. my step grandfather, Emmett. And I always thought it was weird. Well, that is actually really funny. Isn't that funny? I always called Emmett. Like, it was Grandma Susie and Emmett. <laughs> but everyone else, Aunt Lori, Aunt Sophie. I had, I never Aunt understood Wayne. when, like, certain parents would be like, oh, call me by my first, like, whatever their first name was. It's like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but it humanizes your kids. It's actually really good for them. I, I'm, I'm sure. Mentally. But, like, I would always be like, I, I can't do that. Like, you are Mrs. Blank. Uh huh. <laughs> and we're going to go with that. Yeah. As a kid, <laughs> Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> I had a hard time with that as well. I didn't have a lot of adults like that in my life, though, yeah. because I lived in a very conservative area. Mm hmm. Only last names. Uh huh. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> she does not go by a first name. <laughs> um, and so then, at the time of Ali's murder, we find out through Veronica Stapler. <laughs> that um, Logan and Lily were broken up temporarily. Yeah, we go get she back stood together. Stood him up. Mm -hmm. Um, because for a party, and then he made out with a girl at the party, and mm -hmm. Veronica saw him, so she told right. Lily. Mm -hmm. And Guess he was who like, told "She her. was my friend too." Right. Oh, it's all Veronica's fault that I. And also, she died apparently on their anniversary. Oh right, yeah. That was like a fun little nugget. Mm hmm. Um, and then he blames himself for being stupid and Lily for being a bitch and Veronica yeah. because she told Lily and being a snitch <laughs> and he's wildly depressed. Mm -hmm. I think he needs a real therapist. Yes. Instead of just lashing out at everything around him or punching things back yeah. to the walls. Exactly. <laughs> wonder how many walls he's punched in that, uh, um, pool house. Um. So then we get an investigation into the Tritons. Mm -hmm. 
and it turns out to be this club. I th- I'm pretty sure that's where they work in future seasons. So I put ah visiting their future employment. Yeah, the cafe. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, it's karaoke night, and we get someone singing 500 bottles of beer on the wall, which is the goddamn worst karaoke you will ever hear in your life. Mm. Why? Who chose that? Yeah. Get him off the stage. Don't be friends with him. I put, is Triton hazing her? That's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> hazing is a crime. She's gonna. T- As a former sorority girl, I can tell you that hazing is a crime. <laughs> Have you? Has this happened to you? Have you been hazed by a high school fraternity? Call the offices of Pyle and Bruce. We'll handle your case. Get you the money you deserve. At five five five. <laughs> Oh my god. Full steam ahead. Um and then um Duncan gets on stage and she's like, This kid? And I wrote, How would he not have said anything? There's all these things, little nuggets that pop up throughout this episode. And it's like, did they even date? Like, did Duncan literally say anything to her? Well, but she didn't know about this because it's not a he wasn't in it yet. Right. But then also there's the uh, um, uh, uh, like, oh, I was taking pills, and it, or like he has prescriptions oh. for like stuff before even the prescriptions for like when Lily died. Uh huh. It's like, do they talk about anything? Well, you didn't talk about mental illness. Did you talk about your mental illness in high school? With- I didn't date <laughs> with anyone. Yeah, your friends. Totally. Once I knew what it was, it's, it's very, very forward of you. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it'd feel awful. <laughs> I like it. I just, I'm, I'm trying to imagine anyone at my high school trying to bring that up without oh, being see. looked at like they were crazy hmm. because conservative. I see. But also, like, they all have mental health issues and or are addicted to meth. Has this ever happened to you? The meth thing's a real thing there. Yeah. You might have grown up around Veronica's neighborhood. I grew oh, up yeah. in the meth capital of California. <laughs> Calves. Heard about the... We got meth and methane. <laughs> <laughs> we got two kinds of meth. One from Bessie, yeah. and one from Aunt Betsy. <laughs> God, she had quite the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, Duncan can't speak for some reason. I'm Isn't he speaking it's... in idioms? Yeah. He has to... Or pig Latin. I couldn't decide. It was like idioms. You're right. And then he right, brings Veronica a note. Um, and it's like, sing and you will hear the Triton speak. I don't remember what the note said. Yeah. And it's... Something like that. It's written in very feminine handwriting. Right. So I was like, wow, these Tritons have great penmanship. It's, I, they just got... They got their tendrils of... Tendrils that Tritons don't have... I don't know. It's like, what kind of Triton do you see? <laughs> Octopus. Um, I like to be. They're doing my karaoke song. Under the sea. In an octopus is God. In the shade. Mine would be um, Heaven is a Place on Earth. Go ahead. Ooh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth. Um, And then Veronica does karaoke and is like prepared for it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's like. Yeah. But um, she's like, hey. One way or another, I'll go find you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you. That's quick thinking on her part. Uh-huh. She's like, oh, okay. Well, Veronica's not dumb. Why are you Mm-mm. underestimating our girl V? No, I'm not underestimating. I'm saying I'm impressed by your quick thinking. Okay. To pull that song out of like, hmm, how am I going to stick it to these Tritons? It just flipped Brenton off. Just <laughs> <laughs> as like how I would stick it to the Tritons. Yeah. <laughs> just in case people thought I just casually did that to you. Thank you. Uh, Calm down, people. It's okay. So. Um, and then she goes to talk to the Triton or whatever, and it's a man named Jeff in the potty. Yes. <laughs> I wrote, who's in the potty? Jeff's in the potty. <laughs> he had a great Triton voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and he works there. And he got slipped to 20. And I'm like, would I do that for $20? I would just take the 20 and not do it. Yeah. If it was more than that, then I would maybe think about actually doing it. 
He is working probably a minimum wage job. Could be a slow night. Yeah. And he's like, damn it, it's a bunch of high school kids doing karaoke. I'm not going to get tipped for shit. Well, isn't it a coffee bar anyway? Yeah. yeah. Like a cafe. Yeah, yeah that's true. Not a coffee bar. Coffee bar. Um. And she's like, damn, foiled again. And then Rick's like, oh, God. Like, you have to do something, Veronica. They nailed a dead rat to my door. Right. Also, Jesus Christ, he had to kill a rat and nail it to his own door. Did he even do it? Or did he just say it happened? Did we not get an image? I have a, an image in my head that there's a dead rat on his Me door. Me too, but I think that's from my head. Okay. Meanwhile, we're like, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. And then we get Veronica back under the tarp. Listening then, to Duncan. Yeah, he talks to the um, the school psychologist in his green tracksuit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the school psychologist is wearing a very large flower brooch. It's a weird outfit it day is. for everyone. Was it crazy dress day? I don't know. <laughs> she won. That was a really weird one. It was like a sunflower that like took up her entire like Chest. lapel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he says he can feel, feel Lily with him all the time. Yes, I said I forgot about his psychic abilities. I mean, but like, don't you always feel your ancestors with you? I guess so. Do you? You like, why not? Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they're around. Yeah. Um. Um. And then Duncan talks about his episodes and his meds that repressed his memories of Lily. And he's mad that he doesn't remember anything after his soccer practice and before the between that and the funeral. Right. It's just like three days later that he remembers anything. He like blacked it all out. I don't remember a lot of my life. I guess that's true. But usually I have a little bit better recall within like a, a year. But, you know, traumatic. Tra- tra- <sighs> what were you doing this day last year? You don't know. Well, let's see. I was... See, oh, March fourth. What a day! What a day! No, yeah, at eight p.m. I don't remember. Me neither. Well, okay. Point taken. Nah. Nah. Um. And is this where Veronica gets locked out her trunk? Yeah. And then I put what morons kidnap her? Idiots. Her dad probably tracks her. Right. And also at the same time, like. They did it like so she can someone can let her out because they left the keys in the trunk. But it's like, what if someone took the keys, mm-hmm. drove away with the car, idiots? And then Wallace shows up to get her out of her trunk. Mm-hmm. Thank uh, you, Wallace. And then because her car radio is still on with the stapler, um, then they hear that these Triton boys are doing their Triton chant mm-hmm. at the school. It reminded me of Gilmore Girls when. The Puffs, the school sorority at uh, Chilton, kidnap them and they want them to ring the bell. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then Lorelai's Laura, Laura like, have fun getting kidnapped. Like, uh-huh. wear your cute pajamas. <laughs> Completely forgot about Which that. Which is what I love about Lorelai. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Looking out. Yeah. She gets it. And then she goes and gets her. Did you ever get kidnapped? No. In like the f- fun <laughs> sense like this. <laughs> No, we were supposed to spend the night in the chapter room so they could decorate our rooms. Mm. And they stole our keys, but I just handed Marissa my keys and I was like, text me when you're done <laughs> so I can go home. Yeah, a much better way of doing it. I have pictures somewhere. I couldn't post a lot of them because there's a lot of rules around what you can and can't give. Mm-hmm. And um, Marissa gave me a handle of Jose Silver amongst all of the 52 shot glasses we have. <laughs> Solid. She gave me a shot glass for every letter of my name. Wow. Every possible sorority phrase she could think of. <laughs> Some just cute ones. And they're all adorable. I think Drea made them all. Um, And a bunch of penis confetti that to this day I still find in places. And a million condoms. Um, And pretty underwear. Oh, that's nice. And my Captain Jack Sparrow. Oh, she you cut out. She gave me a six foot tall Captain Jack Sparrow. So yeah, I mean, like I stayed out of the room, but like she did a cute job decorating. Mm-hmm. 
She but then I had to get all the penises out of the bed to sleep in it. So I just slept under all the penis confetti. Yeah, I get it. It's and a it warm was blanket. like an iridescent pink. And it got in one of my shoes that I wore like a couple days later. And it like stained the bottom of my <laughs> foot pink. <laughs> Solid. I found penises forever. Me too. You have a penis. Yeah, I know. That's why I find it forever. You better hope. <laughs> Guess so. Oh, no. Snip, snip. I don't like the turn this is taking. Um... It's all full circle. Yeah. So they're doing their rituals in their hoods. Yeah. Um, in the around the conch shell. They have very nice outfits. Mm-hmm. Like those are high quality. Oh yeah. Let me tell you, we did not have high quality <laughs> <laughs> ritual outfits. They do not. They did. They did not skimp. Um. Yeah. There's a lot of. I wish I could see the detail in those outfits because it's always funny to see like what the ritual. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you can kind of identify who the writers, like, what they were affiliated with based on, like, how they do things. Oh, that was smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Secrets. Yeah, us Jeeds wouldn't know these things. Mm-hmm. That's why I date you. You're mm-hmm. ignorant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. That's mean. But uh, she sees them and she takes the pictures. Yeah, she takes her pictures and then she's like, wait a minute, there's six pledges. Mm-hmm. Which wait a that damn minute. Rick wasn't and tim or whatever the fuck his friend in the coma yep. is mm-hmm. um they were just idiots who got fake ids and went out drinking mm-hmm. they went to 11 bars right that's insane i've never gone to 11 bars in one night no i don't even think we had 11 bars near our college oh uh, that's not there are the 11 think of 11 bars we could have gone well to. i guess it wouldn't be bars it'd be places to drink even then, you could do pizza. My heart. Uh-huh. You had Geos. Uh huh. You could get pictures at Sam's. Mm-hmm. You could go to um, study hall. Mm-hmm. The uh, green. Ones. Yep, that one's the um, green one. Yeah, it's the green one. <laughs> um, Woodstocks. Woodstocks. Thank you. Ah, is that only? Let's see. Where else? South Coast. South Coast. Uh, did the wing place have Mm-mm. beer? No. Um, man, that's only seven. You're right. Was there not more? I don't think so. Couldn't get... I guess there was like... Yeah. Okay. Fair point. Yeah. Seven. You can go to Goleta, I guess. I was thinking downtown when I initially made that statement, but it applies almost oh. everywhere. Downtown, you can definitely find 11. But I mean, you have to look for places to get a beer. There's like a ton of restaurants. Yeah, but you'd have to like go in and get a table. You know what I mean? Like most of them, like you would have had to have put effort into. It's not like going into okay, a bar. Let's start it up again. Okay. Um, are we including um, uh, 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 Funk Zone? I mean, I guess we can, and th- but then you can do, like, even then, because the wine place is closed early, so, like, how are you doing this? Fig Mountain, Seven, uh, are both down there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Wildcat, Tonic. Um, Eos. Eos. Um, then you could also go to, uh, what's the small place we used to go to? Mm-hmm. Well, Good Lines on there. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the cash only place. Yeah. What's it called? Elsie's. Thank you. Elsie's Tavern. Uh, Eureka. If you're ever in Santa Barbara, Elsie's Tavern, cash only, beer, soju, wine, cutest bar. Fantastic. So much fun. Very mm-hmm. divey, but like very clean. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, it was my first real like dive bar that's not a dive bar. I mean, it totally. is, but it isn't. Right. Not like the cramped dive bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, wine therapy. Mm-hmm. Benchmark. Mm-hmm. Uh, the brat and sausage place you can drink at the bar there. Mm-hmm. Um, bench. I already said benchmark. Mm-hmm. Eureka Burger. You can mm-hmm. sit at the you bar. You did Eureka. Oh, um, and let's see. Um, you're at ten. Right. I can pull. Out. Oh, Sharkies. Uh huh. There's eleven. Do you want me to keep going? I mean, is there a twelfth? Yeah, probably. Sandbar. Sandbar. Except it burned down. Oh, right. Um, and there's more that I'm not thinking of. Like, well, that's our little promo to Santa Barbara. Visit yeah. Santa Barbara. It's a very cute exactly. place to be. Yeah, brought to you by Santa Barbara Board of Tourism. <laughs> we are not sponsored, but like, if Santa Barbara wants to sponsor us. Yeah, if they want to put us up. 
I do miss it. We I could do. that hotel Indigo. Oh, cute. We should stay there. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. I'm all about it. Perfect. So then we get Veronica comes into the station. She's like, Lamb, Lamykins, listen up. I'm gonna have the perpetrator walk in before the end of the day today, and I'm gonna sit here. And if it doesn't, if they don't, then I will confess to whatever crime you want me to. Lock me up. Yeah. And then I don't think there was another if. No, but she said she was gonna read Cosmo. What was it like add a pep in her step? Mm-hmm. How to walk with a pep in, in your step, step or something like that. It was some sort of sexist bullshit to convince men to think you're good looking. Yeah, totally. Which in reality, men don't notice. You could walk with a limp and most of them would never <laughs> fucking notice. You're like, does she have a vagina and tits? We're good. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I laugh. <laughs> um, Wait, you get that pep in your step. Maybe we should yeah. make men start doing that. What if you had to try to attract women? Hmm. Not well, I'm you. not going to. I got yeah. you. <laughs> but yes, You're like my men. property. Mm-hmm. Instead of me being your property, you, mm-hmm. t- you tooted. I'd like to put the cow out in the barn now. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just, hopefully that didn't get picked up on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of hope it did. Yeah. And then, uh, so she's like, hey, he's going to come. Then she calls Rick and she's like, Rick, they caught the person. You better get down here. Comes down. And he's like, where's the person? It's like, just walked in. Why does he have two hundred and fifty dollars in his wallet? And wrote in there, and it's like, oh, read what I re- read the inscription on the fifty. Oh yeah, because she had given money to Lamb to go have a Wallace. Uh, no, remember she had Lamb go pick someone out of the yearbook to make a fake. Oh right. She was like, pick a kid on this page, write down the name, and then put it in this envelope, and then we'll have one of your croonies drop it in locker one eleven or one ten. Mm-hmm. Yep. And he was the locker under. The- yeah, that's real smart. And the best part is that he was making shitty fakes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Does Veronica not. Veronica was not happy with his craftsmanship. Mm-mm. Um, and then in, it's like it has the inscription. It's like read it out loud, Lamb. It's like Veronica Mars is smarter than me. Love that touch. Mm-hmm. As a very show offy, showboaty kind of lady, I think it's important to shout yourself from the rooftops. Oh yeah, completely agree. Um, and then. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Yep, and then Rick is like, ah, well, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you. And it's like, why me? And it's like, do you not remember? My dad was a hedge fund manager who was embezzling really, money, right? And it's like he deserved to do that because his company cheated him out of his bonus. And then Veronica's like, oh boy. And it's like, no, don't feel bad. The guy is not entitled to his bonus. <laughs> like, does it? It sucks that he didn't get his bonus, but like also at the same time, it doesn't mean he should. Like your bad, your dad's bad for catching him for embezzling. Yeah. Um. So basically, Veronica was a victim mm-hmm. of repercussions for someone else's action, like most women. Yep. Absolutely. But this time, even though she had to dig herself out of it with her own two hands and her brain, she gets off. And a little pep in her step. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then we have the world's worst uh, parent-teacher conference because the teacher doesn't even need to interfere. And uh, Log- Logan and um, Lynn, not Lynn, Lynn and Aaron get in an argument. And then Logan's like, I'll kill you if you say anything bad about her again. And then she's like, I can't do this anymore. Goes, runs to her car. But takes isn't pills it in slow-mo. because she was the one leaking the stories to the press to yes. get revenge on him? Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. It was like, we have to have a motivator here. Yes. Uh, and he's like, I can't believe you do that. Rah, and she's rah, like, rah. I just wanted to hurt you the way you've hurt me. Yeah. How does it feel? And he's like, I'm going to leave you with nothing. Yeah. He threatens to basically leave her Poe. Yeah. And Logan's like, you fucking fuck with her and I'll fuck you up. Mm-hmm. Except then, not like that because this is network TV. Right. And then she's like, I can't take this anymore. Goes, runs away, takes pills, she drives takes, off in her so Viper. I wrote down, dry swallows like six pills. <laughs> The bitch doesn't even use water. Mm-mm. That's how serious, serious, serious she is. What I do love, though, is like I really wanted her to have a headscarf as she drove away in that convertible. Yeah, no, that would have actually suited her, huh? Um. But yeah, then we get a shot of the Coronado Bridge and a Viper pulled over to the side, empty. And they read off the... Eccles, l- whatever. License Eccles plate. 2, yeah. It was sad. It is. 
poor Logie. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that's broken. awful. Totally. And I'm like, his dad's an awful person. <laughs> and I mean, he's not a good person either, but. No, it's not going to help. No, we can tell you that much. We've seen it. <laughs> exactly. First hand and in the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the next one then is Logan looking into. He doesn't think his mom's dead, right? I think so. It's a uh, Lord of the Bling. Oh. Is the episode title? The more I watch the show, the more I think they didn't have a. Um, they might have had a murderer, but when they add the rape portion in, which they haven't really added yet, I mean, they kind of did. Oh, like, you're talking I don't about think, like season two? Yeah, I don't think they identified the rapist until after they finished season one. Totally. Because like, we. They were just like, she was assaulted. It doesn't matter by who. Yeah, exactly. It's like, this is just some part of her story, and we can explore that later. Don't we love damaged people? Yeah. She needs a motivator, doesn't she? It's not like her best friend's dead and her mom's gone or anything. Yeah. So, um, I would say that the message of today is fuck the patri- patriarchy. Mm-hmm. Fuck the patriots is what I almost said. Oh, God. God, yeah. I hate football. Fuck the patriots. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We are an anti-patriots and patriarchy podcast. Ex- <laughs> um, I mean, they are pretty similar. They are one and the same. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you've, you've seen my reaction when I see football on the TV at the gym. Totally. I mean, the, um, Jerry Jones would be a, probably a, a bigger target than Bob Kraft. Um, Jerry Jones is the owner of the Cowboys. Oh. He's, yeah, real big shithead. Um, so, yeah, fuck the patriarchy. Pew, 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 pew. That's my flipping off finger gun, just in case you didn't know. Pew, pew, pew. We don't believe in owning real guns. We are really pro-gun no. control and training and making sure that if you own a weapon that it's locked up safely and you know how to use it maybe it's just like a hunting rifle or something if you enjoy killing things which is totally your prerogative but like make sure it's deers or something and it's legal yeah deers and legal deers and legal that's all we ask yep would you like to plug yes um i just pictured the episode of full house where john samos talks about getting hair plugs for some reason Hmm. Every time I say the word plug, I think of hair plugs. Need to knock it off. Let's cut it out. Whatever. Cut and it Joey, out. That's Joey. That's not even. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't get it. You're hurting full house. I know. How rude. That's literally what I was going to say. Um, You can find me at, but really though, coaching on Instagram and Facebook. You can find me at Emily Bruski, E-M-I-L-Y, B-R-U-C-E, S-K-Y on YouTube and TikTok. And you can find me on my website, but really though, spelled T-H-O, blog.com. All right. And we also run another podcast. It's true. But really though. Fact. Mm-hmm. Spelled T-H-O. Yes. You can find it on all the podcast players. Wherever you found this, you can probably find that. Exactly. Just look, just look for it. Just mm-hmm. it's right there. Just go. And it's a conspiracy theory podcast where we present fiction as fact. Maybe. Or maybe it's fact. We don't know. Right. That's what we're here to try to tell you. We're sussing it out. And you can find this podcast on Twitter and Facebook at Mars Rewatch. And if you want to, you can send an email to MarsRewatch at gmail.com. And you can also find me on Twitter at Powerbrain. So. 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 You all right? Do you want to add? Uh, do you, no, I think, yeah. Let's, let's call it. Let's cut it. What did you want to add? I was saying you can add um, Fuck Patriarchy to your sign off. Oh, fuck the patriarchy. That's cute. But no, just stay toasted, Marshall.